All right, so everybody can see my screen. Great. So welcome everyone to this special Texi Post online discussion for courses and services tour. I'm Aretha Simons. I will be your host for today. I'm the webinar producer. And today we have some amazing speakers with us today. We have Erica Grawi. She's a program service manager at Tech for TechSoup Services and Solutions. And we have Gray Harmon, he's the Director of Learning Programs. And we have Alicia Shadam, she is in the chat area. So a lot of your questions, she's from Customer Support, she'll be answering it for you. I want to do a little bit of housekeeping, if you don't mind. Um, I know everybody is on mute. So if you would, if you have a question, type it in the chat room. If you have a question that you would like to an answer like right away, type it in the Q&A. So I'm gonna rephrase that, type it in the Q&A because a lot of people type in a chat room and everything kind of moves up. And so your question may get lost. So if you like your question answered, type it in the Q&A. Otherwise, just continue to engage in the chat room and chat with each other. And, and you know, there's no silly questions. So if you would like to still chat with us in the chat room, feel free to do that. At the end of the course, there will be a survey. It's only four questions. I would love if you would answer that for us and give us your feedback. We love to hear your feedback. So make sure you answer that for us. So what I'm gonna do is get ready to introduce Miss Erica and she's gonna start us off and I'll allow her to share her screen in just a moment and continue to ch chat with everybody in the chat room. I'm trying to get my screen, my screen switched on me. <laughs> so just a moment. And as you're coming in, type in where you're from. All right, can everyone see my screen? Can I get a thumbs up from my co-hosts? I can see your screen. Great, awesome. <laughs> All right, um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Erica Grawi. I'm a program manager for the Solutions and Services team. Um, I'm here to just give you a really quick tour of um, what the Solutions and Services department at TechSoup does. Um, so, oh, this is my introduction slide. Um, I am from Peoria, Illinois, but I live out in Oakland, California now um, by way of Montreal. So I'm loving seeing the Canadian folks around. Um, so um, at TechSoup uh, as an organization has a vision um, to create a technologically enabled civil society. This is our broader goal across all departments. Um, but until recently, um, TechSoup has really been mostly just a software provider. Um, so we want to focus on digital transformation of nonprofits through adoption of the cloud better pra data practices, and making organizations digitally resilient and adaptive. So this is the nonprofit technology adoption journey. This is the journey that most nonprofits go along in order to actually get their tech needs identified. Now, this one right here, this purchase tech option, is where TechSoup has historically stood. However, um, when the solutions and services department came in, that's when we started identifying all of these other areas where we could really fit in. So um, we identify tech needs by going through assessments and consultations. We help uh, organizations make tech plans. Purchasing the tech that is just a really small part of this whole adoption journey, because then we help with the implementation and the installation of your technology. Um, we train your staff on, on, on the tech to be able to actually use it to its fullest potential. And Gray will tell you more about that. And then lastly, we have options for you to manage and maintain your tech and to actually improve your tech and, and create technology plans. So the solutions and services department is really focused on this whole adoption curve, not just this little bump in it, which is also a very important bump and you can do through TechSoup. But our services, our, our solutions and services team is really looking at this whole picture. So a couple of the services that we use to address that whole picture um, I'm going to go through now. So the first one I'd like to mention is our help desk services. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's just a um, option for um, remote phone support for any urgent needs that you have. 
Um, this is really ideal for micro, small, and medium organizations, um, organizations that have really low staff um, but need just somebody on the phone to call and say, my SharePoint isn't working for some reason. Can someone please help me? Oh, no, I advanced early. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Oops. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the um, help desk services, um, there are subscription services which allow you to have proactive maintenance and unlimited support. Um, so you can call into the help desk at any time and they will actually help you maintain your tech stack in a way um, that is proactive and thoughtful about what, what tools are best for you. Um, our help desk services also offer um, virus uh, protection, secure cloud storage, regular updates and tune-ups and security patches. And perhaps most importantly, um, our help desk offer, offers technicians who know nonprofits. So they know what kind of tech issues you're facing. They know what kind of technology you work with. Um, you know, our, our technicians are familiar with little green light, which, which is something that not a lot of help desk technicians are. So just to give you an idea of, um, of help desk services and how you access them. I'm going to go to our link here on techsoup.org. Um, it's just techsoup.org slash help desk services. Oh, or not. Okay, you can also find it through this drop down menu. Um, so here's where you find your help desk services. Um, so these are the kinds of things that our help desk providers can help you um, help you with hardware, software, security, networking, mobile access, email and servers. Um, again, here are our subscription services, which will offer virus protection, um, security patches, and ongoing unlimited support. Um, but you can also kind of test out help desk. So if you want to just start on that earlier adoption thing and you just need help with one tiny thing, or you just need help with one basic installation support, or if your organization has a pretty technologically savvy staff, but you just wanna have so like a bank of hours to be able to call in, we have these um, hours of tech support that you can bring down, that you can call in and um, uh, it'll subtract from your total time by about 15 minutes every time you call in and, and you get that tech support um, live and on call as you need it. I see there's some stuff in the chat. Oh, TechSoup services link. Thank you so much, Alicia. Um, all right, so back to here. So now we have managed IT. Managed IT is pretty similar to help desk in um, like how it operates. It's usually for slightly larger organizations. Managed IT is usually a little bit too expensive for micro organizations, but the really um, important thing that distinguishes managed IT from help desk is the ongoing technology advice and planning with your personal tech advisor. So when you sign up for managed IT services, you get the hardware or the security patches and the virus protection and all of that ongoing support. You also have an on-call help desk technician who's used to working with nonprofits. But the difference between managed IT is that you have somebody thinking about your technology future and putting in plans for your hardware, putting in plans for your software, figuring out when you're gonna want those upgrades and advising you on which hardware to buy now and which software to buy in a couple months and, and how to really plan out your technology growth strategy as your nonprofit grows, or even your just, just maintenance strategy as your nonprofit maintains. Um, they wanna make sure that you're able to um, really your tech stack is able to um, move with you. Your tech stack should be as agile as your organization is. Um, so to take advantage of managed IT services, you're just gonna go to techsoup.org slash managed IT and you're gonna have to get this consultation. The consultation is totally free, um, but because um, it's such a one, uh, unique service, it's not a one size fits all, you're gonna have to get a consultation. So we, we listen to, um, we listen to your needs, we assess, we listen to what your problems are and what tech you have currently. We assess your needs and think about not just now, but a future plan. We build that plan for you and then we provide you with a proposal and pricing. Again, this consultation is totally free and it's a great thing for um, organizations to take advantage of. Um, so next we have our Microsoft solutions. 
So our Microsoft solutions are really focused on migrating organizations to the cloud. Um, and we can help you with every step of that process. So that's been one of the biggest um, changes in technology in the past decade is everyone is migrating to the cloud. And it's really vital for your digital resilience for you to be able to migrate to the cloud. Um, not only does it give your staff the ability to work remotely and collaboratively, it also means that all of your data, all of your important documents are protected from natural disasters or from um, you know, data breaches if, you're, if you are migrated to the cloud in a secure um, way. So we have a couple different products that really help you migrate to the cloud. We start with the cloud console, which will help you understand which licenses are right for your organizations. Um, after we figure that out, we help you with a basic Microsoft 365 setup. So we download everything on your computer, walk you through the process of setting it up, and then we help with the migration of your email and your data. Um, and then possibly most importantly, we set up your security. Um, so this is another um, option that requires a consultation, um, and it's really important um, to migrate to the cloud. So we have this whole Microsoft solution package here for you. Um, next, we have uh, website services, which is one of my favorite services because it's just really fun to see all of the different nonprofit websites. So we do everything from really small, basic tune-ups, if you want to add a donate button to your website, for example, to full website overhauls. Um, so um, we, we can do website security and hosting if you just need a place to host your website or ongoing maintenance. And we can um, help with creating content, um, to, like boosting your uh, search engine optimization. Um, our goal of website services is to really accelerate your reach, funding, and impact online. I think we can all agree in the past year, your presence online has become unbelievably important. Um, that is the main way that pe um, people find your services, that people find your nonprofit. Also the main way that funders are starting to find um, organizations to fund. Um, so having like a really nice website out there is really helpful to um, put your best foot forward. Um, we can do backend um, integrations with your CRM. Um, and also one of the most important things I think these days is adding mobile capabilities. Um, so, so many people are searching for things on their phone um, to make sure that your website is really mobile ready is a vital part of um, putting your best foot forward with your website there. Um, so these websites, once again, are built with nonprofits in mind. And so when we look at your website, we look for those really important nonprofit components. So there's the donate buttons, the mission statement, you know, all of these um, pieces of um, a nonprofit's website that are really unique. Another thing about website services and this, I just clicked the link at the bottom there. You can also navigate to um, the website services page from the um, services bar at the top of TechSoup.org. Um, we have a whole website wellness assessment that's completely free. So you go to this assessment and all you have to do is type in your name, organization name, your email and your phone number and your URL. Um, so just type in www.techsoup.org, and you will get an email um, telling you how strong your website is. So we have some robots that crawl your website, and they're able to tell you tell us what the site speed is and how um, how easy the website is to navigate, what the map is like. Um, we can um, we we look for. Um, I'm going to forget what it's called now. I think it's called microtext, but basically the text that is hidden on the pictures of your website to make sure that too is boosting your SEO and, and doing the things that it should be. Um, so this wellness report is really helpful to figure out how healthy your website really is. How much do you need to improve it? You know, is it is it just you need to add a couple pages or maybe a link here or there, or a donate button button, or does it need a really big overhaul? Is it is it just so slow because it's been updated with patches in the past that haven't really given your website it, the full glam that it could have? Um, so. Yeah, I would highly recommend going and taking that website assessment and checking out some of our other website um, products. So we again, we can do everything from a custom package um, to just a really kind of tiny um, consultation or, or um, a tiny DIY solution. 
Um, and then the last batch of services that I'm going to talk about today are our digital marketing services. Um, so um, these services are meant to give you basically a full marketing team. So um, most nonprofits don't have the ability to have a whole team of marketers to work on their outreach and communication strategy. Um, I've definitely been a by default communications person, even though that's not my field. So, you know, it's really great um, in the past, I mean, before TechSoup. <laughs> um, um, so it's really great to um, have these digital marketing services where you have a whole outreach and communication team working for you to really get your message across, to target the audience that you really want to engage um, and, the, the, oh, and the right community. Oh, oh. Um, engage the right community with your, um, with your marketing and outreach. Um, so we can do everything from digital fundraising, um, working on your donation pipeline, making sure that that's really clear, um, clean and easy. Um, we can do remote event management, online advertisement, and one of um, nonprofits' favorite is we can work with your Google Ad Grants. Um, it's often that uh, nonprofits will apply for Google Ad Grants and they won't get it because their website isn't up to snuff or because they aren't using um, the full capability of Google Ad Grants. So we can manage your whole Google Ad Grants campaign through our digital marketing services. Um, so we also do branding, design support, um, email content marketing, social media um, marketing, and give some SEO advice. We have everything from consulting to DIY solutions to full scale support options, depending on your budget. So I would highly recommend going and checking out our digital marketing services, um, which you can find again in the services drop down on our website. Um, here's an example of a couple of the uh, products we offer. We also have a digital marketing assessment. So if you're interested in understanding how your digital marketing campaign, how your outreach and communication stack up to other nonprofits, you can take that assessment and uh, understand like where the, you, there are areas for improvement. Um, to learn more about either digital marketing services or website services, there's this form at the bottom of both page. So here's the website services page also has this form at the bottom here. If you fill this out, we will reach out to you and figure out what your goals are, um, what kind of campaign would fit you best, what your budget is, how much we can do for you based on those, um, needs. And, um, uh, can you do Facebook marketing with discounted price? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by with discounted price. We do do Facebook marketing. We can absolutely help you get your Facebook marketing up to up to snuff. Um, now we do have like all of our prices are already discounted for nonprofits. Um, but is is that the question? I think I. I hope I answered that right. Um, okay, great. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend um, just filling this out, just getting an idea of like where your digital marketing is at, where we can help you. Um, it's totally free to have this phone call. Um, and then we can figure out what, which of our services fits you best. So that's really all I had for today. If anybody has any questions about any of those services, um, we've got about three minutes before I have to hand everything over to Gray, I think. Um, so I wanna make sure I give him full time to go over courses, um, that other really big piece of the puzzle when we're talking about digital transformations. Um, but if anybody else has any questions, I know I talked kind of fast there, so I hope you understood. Um, and you can always reach out to me directly. My email is right there. If you have any questions about um, services at TechSoup, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you so much, Erica. If anybody have any questions, we'll, we'll leave time for questions um, at the end. And while Gray is getting ready to um, put up his slide deck, I will let you know that this is being recorded. So this recording will be available within 48 hours for everyone who's registered. So you'll be able to see everything um, in a couple of days, we'll be sending it to you via email. So Gray, I will turn it over to you. Okay, this is great. So um, by the way, I'm coming to you from a little bit farther away than a lot of the people that I saw coming in because I'm in South America. So that's what you're seeing behind me is Uruguay, Montevideo, Uruguay. Uh, that's just a, an aside. Nothing to do with courses because they can be taken from anywhere. 
Um, so let me uh, get started in by saying that uh, TechSoup uh, courses has experienced huge growth. And uh, you can see the numbers here. Uh, I know that uh, maybe these are not the, the latest. There might be a few more. Uh, every day we, we're adding some more. Uh, but, um, but roughly that's where we are, 64,000 uh, unique learners. That means single individuals. And, uh, and you can see you know, almost 150,000 enrollments worldwide. So uh, I'm telling you this because obviously if something has this much you know, growth uh, in, and uh, there's so much interest in it. Uh, if you have not uh, been in courses, uh, check it out because obviously there's something there. Um, you know, some a little bit of the of the growth pattern before uh, 2017. Uh, TechSoup did not have any uh, courses or, or or training for uh, uh, the nonprofit. So this is a fairly new program but is growing awfully fast. A few questions that I'm going to ask, they are sort of rhetorical. I'm not going to expect uh, each one of you to, to type in uh, the answer or anything like that, but uh, just uh, as, as a way of, of uh, uh, getting us started, um, you know, in which forms uh, does TechSoup offer uh, uh, courses in uh, delivery learning in? Uh, you know, there's uh, webinars, online courses, blended and hybrid courses that blended and hybrid means that they have online component as well as on, on site or other, other formats, uh, online and face-to-face -face events. And the answer to that is all of the above. So uh, when you think of, of courses, uh, don't just think of, of, you know, of TechSoup courses being just an online uh, course experience and, and nothing else. We do events, we do or webinars and other things of the kind. Um, are courses and uh, webinars the same thing? Uh, some people don't really know. And in fact, the first few courses that TechSoup did were basically webinars that were recorded and put online. Uh, but the answer nowadays is no, we don't, uh, we make a clear distinction. A webinar is something like we're doing now, uh, more interactive, you're hearing me and, uh, and, and so forth. But I didn't spend time going through an instructional design process and designing interactive activities or anything else. So, so our, our webinar is, uh, is, is fine for some things, for information, but the courses are more, much more elaborate and come with a much uh, you know, complex process, but also a more uh, greater effectiveness. Uh, does TechSoup course, uh, or I should say TechSoup courses are available in what languages? So we here I listed some languages, and the answer to that is uh, that we have availability of courses in English, in Portuguese, and Spanish currently, uh, with French coming just around the corner. It's uh, going to be this month and uh, beginning of July when you're going to see um, the first uh, set of, of courses in French. And by the first set, I, I mean you know a number of them, quite a number of them, but. Uh, uh, we will have Arabic probably sometime next year. And that's due to the systems that need to, uh, are needed to support Arabic. So um, how do we develop our courses? You know, we, we don't capture things from YouTube or do we? Um, uh, do, do we purchase all of our, our content? Uh, no, um, we create our own and we use nonprofit experts. So that means that the content in our courses are geared towards your type of organization, right? So basically, you know, at the top of the line, you see what we uh, actually do. Uh, and the bottom is who we serve. We serve our own staff, we serve our own partners, and then we serve nonprofit uh, staff and volunteers around the world. The areas that we tackle are technology, processes, and training. And obviously at the heart of it is people. Uh, we are all about people. And um, we all we do all this to support your mission. So your mission is at the top. We have a strategy and then we have verticals to support that mission. And in that, those verticals, you're gonna find all kinds of courses. Um, I'm gonna show you a, a chart that uh, I don't intend you to uh, remember a lot of this, except to remember that we have a great variety of topic areas covered. Uh, all the way from tech planning to 
data visualization to uh, Google ad grants to grant writing, you name it. So we covered it. And so we have uh, a lot to offer you. If you uh, find that we don't have something, and I'm not going to say that you can request it and we'll run and get it, but it would be nice to know what your needs are so that we can put it on a schedule uh, and, and at least address uh, that need because if you need it, uh, others might as well. And here, you know, this, this is all comes from, from that chart, except uh, you know, I've broken it down on, on two courses that we actually have. So, um, you know, just to give you a flavor. So it's not just uh, all about technology, because sometimes people associate TechSoup with just very technical things. Uh, but as you see, we have social media marketing, and we have fundraising and grant writing, and things that are not necessarily just technical, um, but um, you know, are needs that uh, nonprofits do have. And within the um, TechSoup courses, we have an area called the Microsoft Digital Skills Center for Nonprofits. And people sometimes wonder, what is that? Or, or they hear us talking about it, as, as we call it sometimes the DSC, the Digital Skills Center. And uh, that is an area that is uh, funded by Microsoft through Microsoft Philanthropies, and, but is produced and operated by TechSoup. And obviously the aim is to serve nonprofits worldwide. And you can see that most of the courses at this point are related to Microsoft products, but some are not. Uh, recently, we, we had some courses on organizing your remote working teams, for example. And um, so, so there's a lot of other skills that are taught that are not necessarily you know, software related, but you have the software related courses uh, and uh, some of them are very, very popular. Uh, our Teams courses, I think in Teams 101, I saw we, we had about 14,000 people that have taken that course. Um, Excel was about close to 9,000 people have taken uh, you know, uh, the, the beginning course in Excel, and of course, then it, 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 uh, it less as, as they go, go higher up. But uh, we have uh, a, a large number of courses, and these are, are free right now until July, and there is going to be very, very small charge after that, just because the grants, uh, uh, the way they come in, and, and uh, we are changing our structure. So the benefits, you know, and, and here I focused on the Microsoft Digital Skills Center, but uh, it, it could be uh, any uh, tech support course, uh, is that uh, in, the, in the case of the Digital Skills Center, you have Microsoft instruction. They have looked at it, they, they okayed it. So you have, um, you know, the benefit of that um, backing of Microsoft, which is also gonna appear in your completion certificate. Um, but you also have uh, the contextualization of TechSoup for nonprofits. So you could take an Excel course anywhere, but ours will have examples specifically for your nonprofit, and that's an asset. And here's a little example of, um, of one of our characters. Uh, it's, uh, uh, she manages a nonprofit in, in Ghana and has some challenges, and she resolves them using some of the software we just uh, showed you courses about. Now, why are our courses effective? Because we go through a whole process of instructional design. Uh, we use a variation of the ADDIE model. It's, it's a standard instructional design model. So you can be guaranteed that when we go uh, and you're taking a course from TechSoup, that is, we, we haven't winged it. We have really thought it through uh, with the nonprofit in mind. And in fact, uh, I, you know, just as a sample, uh, this is our, our real instructional design process. So you, you see that we really think of it and want engagement. But more importantly, we have developed personas. Okay, so when we're developing a course, we're not doing it in a vacuum. We're looking at, you know, who might be taking this course. And we've, you know, interviewed people around the world um, in nonprofits to find out and develop, uh, find out their, their needs, you know, their motivations, their challenges, and uh, eventually uh, develop the whole profile of the persona so that when we you know, uh, create the course, we can talk to, to those particular interests and needs and, and, and desires and goals. So that's a really important part of what we do. And uh, we listen to our learners. Um, you know, we have uh, an example here of somebody that says um, that, um, she didn't spend time in things that she already knew. 
Um, and that's because we develop uh, our courses in, in small you know, chunks, if you will, uh, micro learning. Uh, inside, you're going to find interactive activities and videos, but they're all you know, uh, fairly contained so that you can select what is it that you want and move forward you know, efficiently. <clears throat> this is another example it says you know, self-assigned learning paths and, and uh, he, he didn't have the formal instruction, but he's saying you know, he, he got reinforcement and he, he got what he needed. So um, uh, another example of somebody that said, uh, you know, he appreciates that uh, he didn't uh, have you know, the, the specific timelines, you know, so, so he didn't have an end date. It was an online course. He could take it whenever he wanted. And so uh, it was effective. And finally, you know, one example of somebody that took a course in one of our cohorts, you know, some of our courses have live sessions. So not all of them do. We have beginning courses that do usually go by the 100 level designation, 200 you know, level or more advanced. 300 level courses actually have a live segment. And so um, you meet for a six week period, you go in once a week for an hour and you actually can talk to the instructor, you know, communicate with your uh, classmates. In this case, somebody um, participated not only on that, but watched it later. Uh, to to actually uh, further assimilate it uh, together with uh, uh, you know uh, a partner. So uh, part of the benefit of all of this is that you get uh, a certificate of completion. Um, so uh, this carries a weight of, of Microsoft for the well, those courses are Microsoft and uh, and they are portable. So if you um, move jobs or whatever it is. Um, you can tell your employer that you, um, you know, you're proficient on this particular software because you took the courses from TechSoup and you're going to have uh, the certificates to show. Now, how do you go into courses? Uh, we have a number of platforms. So you go to the TechSoup courses site and we'll uh, give you the links. Uh, but depends on which part of the world you are, you know, there's going to be a, a uh, slightly different link uh, due to uh, languages, look, due to currencies, uh, billing, um, you know, uh, devices, uh, procedures uh, that are different in different parts of the world. If you're in Australia, for example, you'll, you'll pay a GST tax. If you're in North America, you don't. Now, so we have those kinds of, but uh, so we'll give you the right um, uh, you know, link for you to go to the right place to register. Once you are in the in the site, uh, you go in and there's a registration form and, a, and also a post registration form that identifies you know, where you are and, and, and what organizations you work with and so forth. And then you're ready to look at, at courses. So it's, uh, it's, it's not a, a very involved procedure, but um, <clears throat> let me go through some questions that are frequently asked and so it'll help us to clarify things and then we'll see if, uh, if you have questions uh, in addition to the ones I have. But um, if I have a TechSoup account, do I need a TechSoup courses account? And the answer to that is yes, because we're in a separate system at this point. You know, early next year that might change and a single account might do the job. But right now you do need to uh, register into the courses uh, learning management system. So yes, I think yes to that. Uh, can we use one account for multiple people? Sometimes people think, well, you know, we are a small organization, about 10 people, maybe we can get one account and use it for everybody. But remember that there's completion certificates, there's tracking of your work. You want that personalized to you. So the answer is no, the system is made so that each individual has its own account. And um, at this point, uh, that's the way we're working. Uh, we will um, eventually have um, uh, subscriptions and other things that are coming down the road, but those are not um, you know, uh, live yet. Uh, so have your own account and get the benefit of your account. Um, can an organization have an account? Um, right now, an, an uh, official of an organization can have an account. We don't have an overall you know, management system. So for example, your boss could not be managing your learning in our system currently. Um, so, um, so, but you know, he or she can have an account 
uh, and look at the courses for, the, for him or herself or, or, or see what you're taking if you tell her or, or him. And, uh, but, uh, but we don't have organizational accounts. However, if your organization has multiple individuals that, um, that uh, the organization once trained, whether it's on one course or a number of courses, um, yes, we can serve them. You can have uh, your organization contact us. The email address is right there, learn at techsoup.org. And uh, you will be able to um, we, we contact us and we will reach out and uh, see how we can accommodate your needs. So uh, uh, here are the platforms in, in the event that anybody um, you know, wants to, to go in. Uh, the URLs are very similar, so you know usually there is uh, only two characters that are different, um, depending on the on the part of the world that you're in, uh, and um, you know for uh, North America and Asia we are sharing the same you know our catalogs, uh, and uh, this is all I have for now. Uh, I want to know if you have any questions or comments or. Uh, Great, that was great. Erica, both of you, that was really great. So are there any questions? I mean, I don't have any questions because <laughs> you guys covered everything. I mean, you well, really cover everything. That was pretty fast though, but uh, it's a, a fast tour, but uh, you know, hopefully uh, if somebody has questions, we'll be glad uh, to answer. Yes, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat room or put them in the Q&A section. And if you don't have any questions, please write down one takeaway today, one thing you learned from today. Alicia, thank you so much for putting all the links inside the chat box. I really appreciate it. You were fast, so you all have the links. Again, I do want to remind you that this is being recorded and you'll receive the recording, recording within 48 hours. Okay, questions are coming in. Agatha, will you have a presentation recorded? Yes, yes, great. Um, ISEP, a face-to-face -face event was mentioned. Can you explain more? So far we have produced only face-to-face -face event in uh, uh, Houston due to a grant we had, but we are not opposed to them and we, we had a lot of fun uh, it was done uh, in a hybrid modality in the sense that most of the people that went to that session took a few of the uh, courses. They were uh, uh, disaster resiliency related. Uh, so we were trying to help uh, Texas uh, uh, prepare for hurricane season. And uh, we had a, a whole day session uh, in Houston um, for the folks uh, in, the, in the Texas uh, Gulf area. And remember, Agatha, there are other types of um, learning that we have. We have the TechSoup Connect groups. So you may have a local group near you. If you go to the events.techsoup.org page, it'll kind of find your, it'll find where you're near. So if you're in Florida, it'll show you TechSoup Connect Florida. And we were doing face-to-face -face events. Right now they're online, but we plan to eventually start by doing face-to-face -face events. So continue to visit the techsoup.org website to find out any face-to-face -face event. The Seed of Life Foundation, I love how TechSoup is always there for guidance for nonprofits, especially for us, like first times and we don't have any experience. Well, thank you. you you're, you're one of the reasons why we do what we do and we love what we do. Any other questions or comments? Awesome comments though. <laughs> This is good. If there are no questions, that means you all did a great job, Erica and Gray. That means you were fabulous. You, you with me in your presentation, you answered questions. Mm -hmm. I want to um, ask Erica if you have any um, closing remarks or reminders for people for the Solutions and Services Department. Then I'll ask the same thing of Gray. Um, nothing really. Just um, if you have any questions, um, please, please, please feel free to reach out services at techsoup.org or any of the um, any of the forms that you find on our website. Um, we're really happy to talk to you and figure out which which service will really fit your needs best. Um, so just feel free to reach out anytime. Um, that's that's all I've got. <laughs> Thank you. 
Great. Any closing comments or remarks? Sure. Uh, you know, I would encourage everybody to, if, if you haven't been in there and you think you might need one of the Microsoft courses to go in now, because I told you there will, will be some changes coming. So uh, right now you can get all of those uh, courses for free and awesome, you know, you can't go wrong with free. Right? So, so that would be good for you. Uh, if you do it uh, after July, uh, then there might be some small charge. Not, not, it's not going to be very significant, but we need to cover some basic costs of, of, of operation. But right now, you, you know, they're still under the grant from Microsoft and you can get that great deal. So, um, so go on and check them out and uh, feel free to check other things. And I'm more than willing to, to uh, get back to you if you uh, tell us you have uh, looked and you don't find what you want or, we, or, or you need some support. Our tech support people and our, our courses support people are great. Uh, either learn at techsoup.org and we'll get back to you. I agree. And I want to echo that because I know that a lot of nonprofits, you may have you know, Microsoft and you know how to use Word or PowerPoint, but if you go and take the courses, you'll learn a little, some little tricks that you may not know that may speed up your process, especially with Excel and things like that. So like Gray mm -hmm. said, if it's free, it's for me. So I think I might go in there and take some courses too. <laughs> so I do want to remind you to fill out the survey. It's only four questions. We would love your feedback. Um, we always try to improve on, you know, what we offer you and we appreciate you filling out the survey. So if there are no more questions or comments, we're going to close this out. And I do have one more thing. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> you just said if it's free for me and it reminded me and then talked about a uh, survey. The website assessment and the marketing assessments are totally free. So you might as well do them. You might as well just see how good your website is. <laughs> That's great. I would yeah. do that too. And, and by the way, <laughs> you know, we, we know when Erica is doing part of the presentation, I'm doing another, but we're not totally in separate buckets. <laughs> because in, uh, she talked about, you know, number one, we're in the same department. Number two, she talked about, you know, for example, the cloud starter kit. Well, mm -hmm. when you buy the cloud starter kit, we will give you some courses where you can train your staff at no cost to you. So, you know, when I mention a good deal about courses, there's a good deal about <laughs> services as well, you know, because we try to support you in, in your efforts to, to uh, stay up to date and, and, and embrace the new technology. So, um, just a, another uh, a little bit of information, another tip, another uh, thing that might help you if you're uh, considering that uh, that you, you know, if you go with the cloud starter kit, you will not have to pay now for to get all of your staff trained. We'll we'll give you courses that are going to help you out. Awesome, awesome. So I always tell my nonprofits, I know you're busy taking care of everybody else. Make sure you take time to take care of yourself and drink your water. I want to thank um, Gray for being here with us today, Erica, Alicia, and Saba. She's been in the background. Thank you all so much. And we will see you next time on one of our courses or webinars. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank take you. Bye-bye.